So good morning and welcome everyone uh, to our workshop on business digitalization. Uh, we have the busy agenda uh, today, so let's get ahead as people uh, keep on joining. Uh, we're very happy to have you here today. Um, and without further ado, I'd like to start uh, this presentation. Uh, by handing over to Heidi Sagan from the European Commission, DG Connect, who will share a few words on the objectives of the workshop and the broader context um, of why we are here uh, today. Thank you, Barbara, and good morning to all of you. Uh, so, yes, welcome to the next installment of the study on smart industrial remoting. The study forms part of the Commission's activities su to support the digitalization of businesses and should develop tailored advice to support the digitalization of businesses in five sectors and regions with a low level of digitalization. Next slide. The study has already produced good work, and now we come to an important part of the study where we'll learn about five pilots or experiments that have been carried out in the sectors and countries in question. Uh, I am very much looking forward to, to hearing about the results of this work and sharing it with you all. Uh, next slide. The experiments gathered in this part of the study should feed into the final part of the work, which is to develop a toolbox or toolboxes on digitalization for these five sectors. We hope also that the results of the study will inform the work of another important strand of work that we're doing on the digitalization of businesses, which is the network of European digital innovation hubs. That is why hubs have been in, uh, invited and included in all stages of this work uh, and we'll we will continue to make the hubs aware of this useful product going forward. Um, yes, so for today, the objectives of the workshop uh, are to basically to share the stories of these five digitalization uh, pilots with you to discuss the lessons learned um, and from the collaboration with the digital innovation hubs. And lastly, to, to collect your views. So I don't want to hold you up anymore. Uh, I will stop there. And I just want to wish you a very useful and enjoyable morning. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Heidi, for the introduction. So before we deep dive um, into the workshop, uh, just a few reminders again on the house rules. Um, please mute your microphones. Um, unless we're having a collaborative session, which we will be having very shortly. If you want to ask a question, um, please raise your hand. And please note that is this uh, workshop is being recorded. So if you would like, if you don't want your video to appear in the recording, uh, please switch off your cameras. Um, a few words on the team implementing the study. So the study is implemented by PPMI, which is a research institute um, based in Vilnius, Lithuania. I am Barbora from PPMI. You'll be hearing a lot of me today. Uh, we also have other colleagues from the team uh, who will be sharing also their presentations later. And the study is done with five digital innovation hubs uh, based um, in the five countries of focus for the study. So it's AgriFood DIG in Lithuania, Inomina in Hungary, Siteva in Portugal, DIG for EU in Poland, and FIT um, IDIG uh, in Romania. Now a quick look at the agenda for the day. Uh, it's quite packed, but we're very excited to get into the details. Uh, we will begin um, the day with a presentation of the five digitalization pilots that we have been implementing in the last six months, and that's really the focus of the workshop today. You will then hear a story from one of the pilots, so namely Surfoteca in Poland, representing the retail industry. Um, we will then have a collaborative session and we will work together um, to share your experience and insights on how businesses can digitalize successfully. After a short break, um, Ruta from PPMI will present the main lessons and insights that we gathered from the pilots on business digitalization and how companies can reap the benefits. Um, and then we'll conclude with a panel discussion consisting of the innovation hubs and a company that also we are participating um, in the pilots. Um, so let's begin uh, taking a closer look at the five digitalization pilots that we have been implementing 
um, in the last six months. And please, as I present, uh, feel free to drop questions in the chat. Uh, I will try to respond to them as I speak, but also we'll have a short Q&A um, afterwards as well. Uh, so objective of the piloting phase was to test the digitalization good practices that we have gathered in the earlier phases of the smart industrial remoting study in a real world context. Um, the findings of this exercise will also serve as one of the main inputs into the final output of the study, which will be a digitalization toolbox. And the toolbox will contain practical advice for both companies and digital innovation hubs on um, SME digitalization. And the pilots were implemented in five companies um, that were selected uh, for this purpose across five countries in the scope of the study. And overall, the process lasted for six months, beginning with um, company selection and ending with a workshop uh, here today. And the pilots were implemented in close collaboration between the companies and the hubs themselves. And to measure the results of the pilots, we used the digital maturity assessment tool developed um, by the commission and um, used by the hubs to measure companies digitalization. And we're happy to report that all five companies successfully improved their digital maturity scores um, during the pilot phase. Finally, we have gathered a total of 27 horizontal takeaways um, based on the lessons learned that we saw in the pilots. And these takeaways um, reflect insights for different periods, for different phases of the company digitalization. So the pilots um, aimed to gather good practices and the main requirement for the pilots was that it had to be implemented by a company um, in the industry of focus and in the country of focus. And one of the main selection criteria was that the timeline of the pilot and company's needs had to align. Um, and the timeline for this was that we began with the company selection and design of the interventions in October and it ran until March of this year. So a closer look at how this looked um, step by step. Um, so even though officially we began in October, we began scouting potential companies to be selected already in September. Um, so the hubs uh, reached out to the companies within their network to see who is pursuing digitalization opportunities or which companies have specific needs. Um, and in the end, actually one company, one hub uh, construction launched an open pilot um, to select the company as it decided to go beyond its network with regard to construction and launch an open call to, to identify a suitable candidate for the experiment. Uh, we then worked closely with the companies, the hubs worked closely with the companies to actually design the intervention um, between October and November. And here there were two main streams for more digitally mature companies. Um, the digitalization pilot was very much driven by the companies themselves as they already had a good idea of what they want to pursue. And in some cases, the pilot was almost a small piece in a bigger puzzle when it comes to digitalization. For smaller and less digital mature companies, the hubs played a big role in a sense that they assessed the company's needs and proposed the potential digital solutions that the companies can implement. In the inception period, of the companies and the hubs agreed on the main steps of the pilot, um, defined uh, the KPIs and identified any potential risks with regard to delays or data collection. And we also performed the first measurement of the DMA scores for the companies. Uh, we then uh, gathered results in the interim phase and in the pilot finalization, which was um, last month, we gathered um, the main results, um, lessons learned, and also performed another DME assessment for the companies to see what was the progress of the companies. And here we are today reporting on the results of the experiments of the pilots. So, the most interesting part, a closer look at the five pilots um, that were selected. Um, so beginning with Hungary and the, autom and the automotive industry, we have Matra Gebgyarto Kievt. It is a family owned business employing around 250 people and the company predominantly specializes in manufacturing products for the automotive industry. 
And the company was motivated um, to join the pilot and to pursue digitalization because it was experiencing issues with mal manually recorded data from its from its uh, machines. Uh, the data was not sufficiently accurate and reliable. And furthermore, the data collection process was rather slow, so they could not use the data for any decision making or forecasting and, and production plan planning. As a result, um, the pilot aimed to install 50 data collection terminals and integrate them with the enterprise resource planning system. Next, um, we have Surfoteca, um, the retail company, which um, you will hear from shortly. So I will keep it brief here. Uh, Surfoteca is a store specializing in the sales and maintenance of sports gear. And um, the company was motivated to pursue digitalization to integrate its sales channels. Um, the stocks were managed differently across multiple selling platforms and physical locations, and this sometimes uh, resulted in customers ordering pieces that were actually um, not in stock. So as a result, the pilot aimed to introduce a centralized cloud-based system for warehouse integration, and this is one of the examples where the company worked really closely with the hub to actually identify what type of solution would best fit its needs. Um, moving on to textile, uh, we have Unifardas, which is a company working in the professional clothing sector in Portugal. It specializes in the production of highly customized garments according to clients' needs. Um, and as can be guessed, manufacturing ultra-personalized garments is a complex task that actually requires um, communication across all the production lines, ranging from providing quotes to selecting the raw materials for the final product and creating a technical sheet, a technical specification for the final product to be produced. And quality analysis performed by Unifardas revealed that nearly 75% of non-conformities in orders um, resulted from miscommunication between the different departments or between the company and its customers. So as a result, uh, the company decided to implement a web-based solution for parametric data capture that would centralize all of the uh, production data in one place to help with better definition of order requirements and also the final price um, calculation. And in Nefarda's case, uh, the digitalization pilot was part of a bigger digitalization effort in the company, as the company does have a 10-year digitalization plan already. Um, moving on to AgriFood in Lithuania. This is the smallest company um, of the pilots. It's a micro farm. Uh, it's a family farm. And 50 acres of work in joy is um, a zero waste farm which, which grows its own produce, but it also repurposes um, products from other farms that are not fit for the market and they repurpose them into jams or vinegars. And the main challenge for the small farm was that uh, most of its processes are done manually. Um, so it really wanted to improve its business process digitalization as currently crop monitoring, accounting, regulatory reporting and other aspects were done in spreadsheets or even on, on paper. Um, so here the company worked closely with the supporting digital innovation hub and a service provider to implement a quantity and quality management system at GrowSmart. Last uh, but not least, uh, we have uh, Unit H2B, a architecture and engineering company in Romania, which um, implemented um, the pilot for construction. And this company was selected through an open call uh, launched by Fit Edich. And the pilot focused on the improvement on the use of uh, building information management system by the company. The company had already installed the system and integrated into its working processes, yet it wanted to streamline the use of BIN functions and also expand how it uses BIN for team management, but also for um, external collaboration. So let's take a look um, at the results. So as already mentioned, the, the DMA scores improved for all five companies um, during the pilot phase. 
Um, and all but one intervention achieved their planned outcomes within the pilot period. So beginning with Matro, um, the, the company successfully installed 50 data collection terminals um, and they significantly improved uh, troubleshooting and also reduced unit costs and production times. So this is one of the pilots where the benefits are already quite visible. Um, as the representative of the company estimates that the investment will actually pay off as quickly as in one year. And as a result of the pilot, the, the company improved its DMA score by three percentage points. So Pateka, again, I will try not to disclose too much, even though it's very tempting. Um, the company had one of the biggest increases in its DMA um, score by 12 percentage points. And in close collabor collaboration with the hub, uh, the company successfully integrated its databases into a single cloud-based e-commerce system, which already led to some visible um, benefits for the company. Um, Unifardis is the one company that did experience some delays in the, impl in the implementation of its foreseen digital solution. So the company did successfully implement the parametric models, but it still has to conduct beta user testing in April. Nevertheless, as mentioned, the company is continuing with the digital digitalization. So even though it did not achieve maybe the desired results in the pilot phase, that does not mean that the intervention actually stopped. There were simply um, some delays. And the main cause for the delay was due to the fact that the initial digital intervention plan that was developed by the company did not foresee how time intensive the collection of data needed to construct the parametric models would be. The company was working with also with an external provider and there also the collaboration kind of the initial phase of establishing the collaboration took a little bit longer um, than expected. Nevertheless, um, Still, the company saw an increase in two percentage points of its DMA score um, during the pilot phase. Looking at 50 acres of work and joy, uh, this is one of the companies that had the biggest increase in its DMA score of full 19 percentage points. And this is because the digital pilot um, affected all aspects of the farm's management. So the quantity and quality farm management system, AgroSmart, affected all aspects of the farm. And the initial and the initial um, phase of the pilot was quite resource intensive um, for the farm owner as it had to map um, and collect the data and input into the system. And the data was really stored in various places on the farm. So the, the farmer was really um, learning a lot. Nevertheless, it's already shared that it sees um, quite a few benefits um, of digitalization and it's really evident in its in its um, DMA score. And the farmer will continue receiving support from the hub and from the company until November 2023. Um, as in agriculture, it wants to go through the entire season of planting, but also harvest to ensure that the farm is comfortable with all functions of the system and also can use it to forecast um, the next season. Finally, um, Unit H2B worked closely with the FIT EDIG and also BIMTAC Association in Romania um, during the pilot and implemented a total of new of eight new BIM cases into its workflow and also adopted a new BIM collaboration method. Um, it's also worth highlighting that the company already started a project during the pilot phase in which it is collaborating with another engineering company in Romania by fully using them. So overall, the company improved its DMA score um, by three percentage points. So this is the five pilots. And this is the main, these are the main results from the pilots. You will hear later from Ruta on the actual main insights and lessons learned um, that we gathered um, through these pilots. And you will also shortly hear from Surfateca and Shamek representing the for you on the collaboration between a hub and a company um, in those pilots. Um, now I think it's we still have a little bit of time for questions. Um, so Ruta, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, that appear from the audience. I see there are some in the chat. Yes, hello everyone. So there's several questions in the chat. Let's see how many we can get through. 
the first one was why was construction sector chosen for Romania? And I guess in more general terms, why were the country industry pairings chosen? Uh, yes, uh, good question. So this is actually linked to the original design of the study. Um, so in the initial phases of the study, we, we were given or we were, we were focusing on five industries um, as represented here, and we did an analysis um, of which countries, for which countries these industries are important, and in which countries the SMEs in these industries are less digitalized. So as a result, we selected construction industry in Romania, as it is uh, an industry with quite low digitalization scores, and that was uh, how we approached um, the next steps of the study. Um, all the countries are linked um, by industry and the country. Right, and then we had another question from the chat as well, was um, uh, regarding whether these companies, all of them are SMEs, and whether these were the first digital solutions that were implemented in these companies. Um, indeed, great question and actually um, important detail. So um, all companies are SMEs with Matro being the one company that has 250 employees. So it's more of a medium sized company um, or already leaning towards a large company. And the rest of the companies are SMEs or even micro enterprises. In the case of Surfatak, it has six employees or at the time of the pilot, it had six employees. And also 50 acres of work and joy has two um, employees there, so it is also a micro farm. And um, looking at the actual digitalization, so the picture varies as well. Um, in some companies, um, for example, in 50 acres of work and joy, the digital solution was almost a first step in digitalization. The company was of quite low digital maturity. They were using um, the governmental portal to submit their accounting sheets, uh, for example, but otherwise everything was done manually in the company. And also the learning curve, and hence also, as you see in the DMA, um, the increase uh, was one of the largest ones because the company really underwent a steep learning curve. In other companies like Unifardas, for example, Unit H2B or Matro, all of these companies already had quite a few digital solutions implemented. And for them, the pilot was kind of a continuation of their digitalization journey. And again, it's also visible from the DMA that the increases were smaller because there the interventions really focused on further improving the adoption of digital technologies. And then we had the third question, which related to whether these were the DMA scores were the only KPIs we measured or whether we looked at additional KPIs as well. Um, absolutely. So for each of the companies, um, we used the inception phase to actually um, discuss and agree on the main digitalization steps, but also to define the, the KPIs, um, not just looking at the DME, but actually uh, define the expected KPIs for each company, depending on the type of the pilot that they were um, planning. So for example, for unit H2B, the KPIs were linked to the use of BIM and how many use cases they expect to explore um, during the implementation months. Um, for Matro in Hungary, the KPIs were quite concrete that their goal was to implement 50 data collection terminals and to map them. So the KPIs really varied across and they were quite tailored to each company. Okay, and we just also got uh, more comments, so I think we can address one more question. So the other question we have is whether the DMA score was evaluated immediately after the conclusion of the pilot, and could it potentially include other improvements that the companies have made apart from the pilot as well? Um, indeed, that's an excellent question. So we did um, assess the DMAs immediately after the conclusion of the pilot. Um, and it's also worth noting that for some companies like Unifardas, but also Matro, and I think all of them actually digitalization continues. So it would be even worthwhile perhaps assessing the DMA also at a later stage to see how the company is progressing with digitalization. Um, and yes, it is for sure possible that DMA score, especially for these more digital mature companies, reflects not only the pilot's contributions, but also other initiatives taken by the companies um, in the months during which digitalization was taking place. Um, so indeed. So thank you. I think that in terms of time, we have to move on. I see that there are several other comments and questions in the chat. 
Uh, so we'll try to address what we can in the chat or within other presentations, hopefully. Uh, but of course, thank you very much for your active participation and keep it going so that we have a good discussion today. Um, so moving on, uh, so now we will turn to one of our pilots, uh, Surfateka from the retail sector in Poland, and you will hear from the hub and the company that implemented this pilot. So we will have Przemek from representing DIC for EU, uh, and we will have Roman representing Surfateka, the company that implemented the pilot. And what I want to say as a brief introduction here is that this really is a success story. So someone in the chat was asking about companies uh, that were SMEs and lower on the digitalization um, journey. And uh, this is especially a case like this, the company that in a rather difficult situation after a fire at their premises managed to implement uh, a digital solution and increase their digital maturity score quite significantly. So I think it will be quite an inspiring case uh, for everyone to hear. And what we will have now is a short presentation uh, by uh, and then we will have a brief Q&A session. So again, if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat and we'll try to ask them. Uh, and I pass the floor to Przemek and Roman. Yeah, thank you, Ruta. <clears throat> uh, hello, good morning, everyone. I hope you hear me well. Um, I guess it's true. Uh, Romek, can you say something so that we know that we can also hear you? <laughs> hello, everybody. No, please, Przemek, tell okay. about us. Cool. So yeah, we're on the same page. Uh, I can actually start with addressing one of the questions that were asked. So yes, I will tell you how much of HR uh, or stuff we needed for this project in terms of the Surfoteca. And the second thing is that uh, if you think of the companies that are or are not digitalized and the DMI scores from the beginning and the end, uh, please note that it was uh, like the project itself, it was for like a six months. So if you're far farther in terms of the digitalization of your company within six months time frame it could be hard to actually significantly increase something because it really requires a deep dive uh, like any improvement actually requires a deep dive and the less you have the easier the deep dive is uh, so yeah let's go with the presentation uh, please Barbara uh, for the next slide so um, yeah something about the company You've heard about the Surfoteca, you would normally connect this sort of business with Portugal, but Surfoteca is actually located in the northern Poland. We also have the sea and we also have surfers, fortunately. Uh, and yeah, so what is the type of the company? So if any of you has ever been in the seaside, you've probably seen a place like this. So you enter the shop uh, and there is everything everywhere. There are some helpful people trying to aid you in making some sort of a choice uh offering some prices on some certain goods and uh, this is primarily how the surf shop looks like and this is exactly how surfoteca used to look like and uh it was not only the one physical location where the company was located but actually there was also two pop-up stores located somewhere uh outside the main location and uh if you think of it as a stocks management and if you think of it in terms of like the business management then uh, it was hardly working. It, it was not hardly working in terms of the revenue because still there were the clients and there were the helpful people hanging around trying to sell something to you. But if you add e-commerce to this sort of management, so you have your web shop where people can browse through some stocks. And uh, then you're also thinking of a social media selling, you're posting something somewhere, you're using some other external retail platforms to sell some goods of yours, then you end up in the situation uh, in which Surfoteca ended up, which is uh, it was hardly ever possible to find something or to know where is this actual thing located, or if they actually do have this piece of assortment that somebody actually wants. So essentially, there were three different different warehouses located in different locations that didn't have the central system that would manage those stocks. And there was no system for informing the other points of selling that something has actually been purchased, which means that all the stocks that were on the warehouses were actually virtual. OK, I lost the slide, but I say it now. Uh, so the stocks uh, were unknown pretty much. So uh, it's not so bad if you can sell the things that you don't have if people are paying, but what problems does it cost to the business? And in terms of Surfoteca, it was like a pretty big overhead in terms of the processing of the order. 
because if somebody goes to your web shop in the low season, which is essentially after summer, uh, and is trying to purchase some goods, and then you see that somebody has purchased whatever kind of gear that you actually don't have, then you're trying to communicate to the customer that, hey, dear customer, I don't have this, but I can offer you that for another price, maybe something of bigger quality, something more expensive, I'll just discount uh, to the price that you wanted to pay, uh, which doesn't lose your customers, gives you the big uh, or good ratings of the customer experience, because this is what Surfoteca is famous for. But on the other hand, uh, it doesn't really help you uh, do business because you're losing your margins or you're going under margins just to keep the customer satisfied. So that was essentially the state of uh, Surfoteca when we started talking about the participation in this pilot. And to add something to this situation, uh, it was already mentioned by Ruda, but uh, Surfoteca had a fire uh, in the fall, uh, the physical fire. So the main warehouse was actually burned to the ground uh, with more or less all the stocks because there was some 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 stocks that were actually recovered but primarily everything was just burned down uh which actually helps in the digital intervention but we don't actually uh recommend doing this to all the companies that might have this kind of problems but uh so yeah there was a fire uh which kind of opened a new perspective for the company uh because fortunately the insurance company did pay out uh what they had uh, or what, they, what was claimed. So essentially the company stood in front of the uh, like new year, new season, uh, new potential challenges and no systems, no stocks. So that was quite a good moment to actually rethink and redo everything that uh, was not working in the company. So what we decided even before the fire was to uh, digitalize the whole process of customer uh, or dealing with customer experience. So what we wanted to have uh, we wanted to be able to know what assortment do we have, where is it actually located, so to centrally manage the warehouses, to centrally manage the stocks, so that if there is something being sold in one physical point of sales, we would like to see that in our web shop immediately, not to sell twice the same good that we uh, don't really have on our stocks. Uh, we wanted to have it all integrated so that even though we may decide to use the social media selling on some other external platform like Allegro or eBay or whatever else, it would be integrated with the warehouse and we would be informed uh, about any purchases made done uh, through that channel. Another thing which is connected to that, we also wanted to unify the customer experience in terms of like the messaging they re receive when they're purchasing things online, the shipping that we manage uh, in terms of like the shipping of our goods uh, and also the billing process. So all of these are kind of connected, but previously, depending on each and every platform that was used or each and every point of sales that was being used, they were actually not really uniform. Uh, okay, so the solution, what was the solution for that? The solution was to actually pick some sort of an IT tool that would be uh, appropriate for this particular company. Uh, and yes, it states here that uh, finally we use the Fakturovnia software uh, along with some other like Baselinker to integrate the, uh, the social media and so on. But uh, the problem here was that initially uh, our requirements and actually uh, they, they were quite different before we learned what was actually burned in the fire because during the fire the company has also lost the primary server for the primary warehouse which was not cloud-based at the time and then we realized that we actually do not have any source uh, or list of our assortment so we essentially didn't have inventory knowledge at all even though it was all burned but it would be still nice to know how it is uh, structured so the whole project actually needed to rebuild the whole inventory and instead of integrating the old warehouse into the new solution which was the primary intention of the project we decided to pick the new tool that's going to be cloud-based because the old tool was dead anyway uh, so that we could actually use it uh, as a central warehouse that's going to be the primary and the first source of truth for the whole company to which then we port the other selling solutions and uh, what was our role in this whole thing so uh, first, it was probably to encourage the company uh, to actually participate. Uh, and then, uh, because, uh, I mean, if you're living in a surfing world, then you're not always at the spot. And uh, if you ask Romek in a second, where is he physically located? Then he will say, yeah, so I'm in Canary Islands and maybe I'm at 
in Poland now, but maybe I'm going to leave to Canary Islands again because his family likes to spend time over there. And I kind of understand that. So uh, it is quite tough to actually manage this kind of a project. Uh, if we are scattered and if uh, there is a primary <laughs> physical location of the, of the company, that's actually very. So uh, that was quite tricky. And our role was actually pulling this whole process through. Because in the end, uh, when we discussed it internally, when we discussed it with uh, the other participants of this pilot, then we figured out that uh, in this process, uh, we as a hub were actually uh, driving this whole, I, I've lost the slide, okay, say it again. Uh, so we were driving this whole process and ensuring that everything is happening on the way. And uh, usually, because if you think of the other, the projects that were mentioned here, so implementation of 50 data reading points and so on, these are quite big. And what is super important about this particular project here is that it's not so budget intensive. And uh, this is not actually a huge endeavor that's going to change everything or you're buying a lot of things that you need to integrate and implement. It's not this kind of a project because in the retail, oftentimes if you're trying to connect the selling activities online and offline, it's, it's not a tool that is so important, but it's the, like the data structuring and so on. You need to think of it. You need to rethink the structure of the business that is usually in Poland growing incrementally like Serpoteca for about 20 years. Uh, you're just adding things without thinking on how is it structured. And if you want to do this sort of implementation, then you rather need to rethink how is it going to be shaped, but not necessarily the tools because they're the cheapest part of that if you compare how much time you need to spend. And uh, as Serpoteca didn't have the resources, because as we mentioned, they were burned. They didn't even have a place to sell things and they didn't have things. So actually at the lowest point, it was the owner and his wife uh, and one person responsible for the service of, of, of the equipment that were actually employed or semi-connected with Serpoteca during this whole project. So uh, with this and with all the burden they had uh, because of the situation they, uh, they were left in, uh, we were the owner of this whole process, but we were helping to choose uh, to choose the solutions. We we're actually picking the solution, comparing what's available in the market and helping this whole mapping process because we have experience or we could ask some other companies that are collaborating with the hub so that we finally get to the uh, to the end point. And I think that the first major takeaway from what I'm saying here is that, thank you, uh, is that uh, the hub needs to be driving things uh, or the single point of contact ideally within a hub needs to be driving things because otherwise this is something that's probably not going to happen. And here we see how it was shaped uh, in terms of the timeline step by step. So obviously you need to define some sort of the digital strategy, which is based on the current situation. Uh, the digital maturity was assessed by Romek that, yeah, we don't have it. So <laughs> that was uh, that was it. Uh, but they were not on a zero actually because they were operating the web shop anyway. Uh, and it didn't change much from the uh, how it looks like per perspective because everything that happened here actually happened uh, under the cover uh, or under the hood. So then obviously gathering the requirements for uh, adoption of the new platform. Uh, we did it twice because first we wanted to use the integration with the base linker tool. Then we realized that we don't have the warehouse to integrate, so we needed to create a central warehouse with Fakturovnia. So that's what happened. Then we created the warehouse at Fakturovnia and started porting things out to Fakturovnia with the use of the base linker, if necessary. Uh, what is quite interesting, uh, obviously porting social media is also a part of porting to the central warehouse. And the stage we are at now still is integration of the physical channel because as Romek will say probably in a uh, couple of minutes uh, the Surfoteca is now opening the pop-up store uh, in other location uh, just as every year uh, because the season for uh, for water sports is coming actually during the May weekend it's like the huge load of uh, people rushing to the physical stores in terms of the surfing gear and then we'll have a break uh, so we'll be able to actually finally uh, finalize finalize uh, all the integrations on the physical stores we do actually still need to make here. And what's also important is that uh, we will also be doing, because the pro project is finished, but it's not finished. And that's another cool takeaway from the digitalization. So once you start, you start. So uh, there is probably no other way back. 
so we need to continue with this and we will be uh, inventorying the new stocks because everything is scheduled to come after the May weekend. So probably in the middle of the May, we will be adding a lot of new inventories apart from those that we have already uh, into this whole software infrastructure. So please for the next slide. OK, so what have we achieved? Uh, it's also quite important. As we have mentioned before, uh, the biggest problem from this whole mess that uh, Serpoteca used to have is the fact that there were a lot of uh, incorrect orders. Incorrect order being we sell something we don't have or we actually offer something we don't have or it's being sold somewhere else. And since we started, uh, the number of such orders is zero, which is super good. The other good thing is that uh, from all the databases that Surfoteca used to have, uh, there is now only one single source of truth, which is quite in line with the whole industry for all and digitalization strategies, which is good. And uh, we already exceeded, I mean, uh, I don't know if it's ambitious or not, like the target of five orders, but in low season in the water sport industry, I think it is. Uh, so we actually had uh, for the time of making the report, the six uh, orders from the new sales channels that were actually ported or integrated to the central warehouse. So these are the results. Obviously, they go along with uh, some DMA uh, increase. But if what is super important is that we have the single source of truth. That's something we are really proud of and we are happy, really happy because it really increases a lot the efficiency of the whole company. Uh, we are standardized in uh, terms of the customer uh, relations. And uh, it is way easier to actually show someone how the company works, because if the season is coming, then you need to hire additional people that will work in the physical locations and try to handle uh, a lot of things uh, that are happening over there. And having the structured tools that are actually on top of structured processes and the ways you actually uh, work within the company, because previously the company didn't really have any uh, description of what is it doing. And I think that if you work with SMEs, that's the typical thing. And even though it may be an ISO certified SME, then they have the standard ISO process that somebody sold them for like 2000 euro. And then anyway, they don't know what they're doing. So uh, that was the case here as well. Uh, now it is structured. So in terms of onboarding, uh, it is way easier because you can just show to the people that, OK, guys, so this is how we work. This is how we process this. There is no multiple tools and logins and passwords that you need to give them to actually show them how to log into this platform and check for the orders and so on. So it's way easier, uh, which means maybe uh, it, it doesn't mean that you need less qualified people. You need people with the same qualifications, but on the other hand, they will be more focused on selling and actual development of the company than handling the internal issues, uh, which was their primary load uh, back in time. Uh, so these are the results. Uh, I think there will be probably a lot of questions, but I would also like to add one more thing in the end, uh, maybe to start some discussion uh, on the, in the other direction. Uh, and this other thing is uh, you may be thinking of how do you budget it if you're a company and if you have like a six month time frame and if you uh, have your site burned. So how do you do transformation? How do you approach this finance wise? Because the other things probably Romek will answer in a second. But actually, as I said, it's not budget intensive. And this is the biggest uh, advantage and disadvantage at once. Because if you look at the EU fundings that we have or possible grants and so on, this type of a project, which I believe would hugely improve 95% of retail businesses uh, running over the internet in Poland right now today, uh, this project doesn't qualify for any grant because it's too small and it's too simple. And uh, the way we assess those finance, uh, the way we assess projects in the financing schemes is that it, it needs to be super innovative. It needs to you know, change the whole world and so on. And uh, I think that this project, maybe that's why we were picked over here, uh, is a good example of how much, because the fact it costs like, I don't know, 1000 euro a year, maybe. Is it much? No. It's super cheap. And if you think of the company that facing the tremendous cash flow problems, you still cannot afford it, uh, but there is no other way for you to finance it. And I think that uh, there are projects, not only in the retail industry, but in all the industries that are actually sub EU funding budget level. They are or could be super revolutionary for the company, oper company operation would yield 
like tremendous results, but there is no way uh, to proceed with those because there is no right source of financing for that. And with this, we are actually helping Serpoteca as a hub <laughs> to, to, to face the challenge. But I don't think that this model is actually scalable because we, we, we don't have the budget for th this sort of operations anyway. Maybe there is a call like this so we can apply to, to have those budgets, but still I believe that this is a huge room for improvement in terms of the whole ecosystems, that there are projects that are cheap and yield great results, but still companies cannot afford them, especially when operating in the tough conditions we have right now. So yeah, just wanted to underline this thing while I'm opening myself and Romek for the questions, if any. Yes, and thank you very much for presenting Servotech as pilot. I liked very much what you said. Once you start digitalizing, it never finishes, it never ends. And I think that's very accurate. Um, we also have several questions in the chat, but before that, I wanted to bring in Roman and just ask what made you decide to participate in this pilot? What convinced you? Uh, sorry. For me, it's the most important that after 20 years work on this season shops, uh, we have so many problems with the customers from internet. It's not from us that we have, uh, how to say is because season work is very intensive. We work like 20, 40 hours in, we sell in the normal shop, stationary stop shop some stuff and it's not time uh, change on the website and something like this it always we in effect of this we receive so many problems in next days that we must translate our customers that we sell something and offering the next things in cheaper price because we need to keep the our customers and now like the Przemek said after fire we know that this is a time the cleaning this and of course it's not easy made like this we just before really important most important month before us because season starts in june in my opinion we need to finish everything before season and i strongly believe that will be success now we have some effects about this and i i think that is like Przemek said is not uh, expensive for us but i think I, i'm quite sure that after season I we are very we be are we are be happy after this. Sorry for my English. Well, thank you for the answer. And I think that's very good to hear that you see that this after the season you're expecting to see some positive results. Um, I think we also yeah. had a lot of questions about this, and I know uh, that you touched upon this in the presentation already, but uh, maybe a question to you both. What steps did you take to analyze the digitalization needs and specifically select the software solution? Is it to me or to Roman? Because I didn't hear. I guess it's to me. Um, you can start. Maybe <laughs> Roman can add. Uh, I will answer because, uh, yeah, so we chose this software because it fit uh, the requirements that we've had and other companies we work uh, with, like uh, other SMEs that are actually working in the retail, uh, they use it and it works. And that, that's the primary reason. And I've seen uh, in the chat uh, another question. Uh, and why, why did we pick something we know? Because we just changed from the, the other software because we learned that we don't have the warehouse. Because before we thought we have the warehouse software, which was like Comarch or Tima or something, I don't remember the ERP system, but it was not a cloud-based system and it was burned along with the server. So uh, somewhere in the middle of, of talking, actually we were sitting with Romek, we switched on the base linker, I configured the things on the customer end, and then I was like, okay, so let's add the warehouse. And Romek said, yeah, but hmm, I don't have a login. Let's check. And it was, yeah, it was on the server that was actually burned. I was like, cool. So yeah, let's start it over. Uh, yeah, so th that's what happened. And the reason why we do it, uh, why we did it, is because we knew the solution and it was easier for us to implement. And there is another question connected to that in the chat. Sorry, Romek, I'll let you in a second. Uh, which is, uh, how did you choose this and? Uh, how did you select? Do we have a list of partners? Do we have like, uh, and the questions touch the objectivity criteria. So were we objective in choosing the system? The, the answer is no. 
we were subjective because we were working with a company. And uh, this is how we operate. By the way, we are not anymore. We used to run the digital innovation hub that was EU funded. Now we are self-funded, which means we struggle with funding sometimes. But on the other hand, we are free to recommend things uh, that make things efficient. And I believe that this is pretty good for us and pretty cool for us because we can make things fast and we can make them work instead of comparing everything and finally getting into the tender and somebody bids better with something that is cheaper and we're actually not able to assist anymore. So, so that's how we picked it. It was 100% subjective decision in our case. Romek, do you add something? Thank you, Romek, you translate this very well. Okay, so we're good. All right. Well, thank you for the answer. I hope that answers the questions in the chat, because indeed, I think there were four or five questions specifically about choosing the solution. Um, another one was about whether the actual innovation in this case was not just adopting another digital solution, but looking at it from a more systematic perspective, if that was one of the kind of actual added values of this pilot, in your opinion. Mm, yeah, I think, uh, as I said, uh, the company was growing for 20 years with no plan. Like the plan was to to buy and sell, like the retail plan, like the typical retail plan. And uh, I believe, and we believe at uh, the for you that actually, like any implementation or use of digital tools should be uh, justified when you're trying to solve some problem that is being solved by this particular solution. So this is why we picked like cherry picked Fakturovnia because we believe it solved the problem that Romek had. And if we focus on the digital solutions, then we become a digital solution selling company uh, that doesn't actually think of problems, which is uh, abundant in the today's market. If you think of cobots, ERP systems, whatever, like everything is being sold without thinking of the customers that are in the end. And we are trying to kind of fill this gap and to uh, first think of what problem are we solving, like the real problem, because if we wanted to get EU funding for this, we would probably think of some other additional problems just to pump up the project so that it's bigger, more significant and looks more innovative. Maybe uh, here we didn't do that. We, uh, we did it with a commercial budget and what we did and what we wanted to achieve is actually to catch the solution of the problem, which is really not the tool. Tool is just the implementation layer of the long process of thinking on how to increase the uh, the operation capabilities of a company. The same with robots. You can buy a cobot. Everybody can buy a cobot, but in the end, what does it help you do? If the process you're automating, it's not needed, or you can throw it out of your company uh, to some supplier to make to make them do something, then why would you actually automate something which is not necessary? So this is our approach, and uh, yeah, so that's how I. Uh, address it. So the primary innovation, I don't really think it's innovative what we did. It's not innovative. It's uh, a game changer for the company, but everything is known for like more than 10 years what we did in this particular process. Does it mean it is innovation? Yes, it is innovation because if we use digital tools to improve operating capabilities of a company, this is what all the hubs in the world want to do. That's what who you want in your hubs, in the pool of customers, but it doesn't mean you have to buy the newest thing to solve the problem that doesn't exist. Sometimes it's just very simple and like this. Thank you, and I think that's a very important point indeed, that you don't always need the highest tech solution and sometimes something that has existed in the market for a while now can be a game changer uh, for a company, depending on where it is in its digitalization journey. Um, and actually, following up on this, I also wanted to ask what results are already visible for you, Romek, uh, at this current stage? What benefits do you see? Uh, true is that uh, for me is the most important uh, that our work was more simple. It's not easy to translate, especially in my age, for the next days calling to bad customers that I sell something one day before and I not made change on the internet. And and also uh, is maybe, maybe Premek say, but my English not, not, not so good. For me is the 
uh, re uh, reported this factor of yeah, make uh, possibility connect with our biggest uh, partners that also we we connected uh, the warehouse for for from our partners and they opening uh, more more possibility for for us and for effect we wait uh, we wait i'm i'm quite uh, sure that will be work okay because we have now one really good employers next to come in next month and many things are now is more clear for us and i'm i'm really optimist about this and i i'm not expect like the that we receive some extra more money more i for me it's most important that we receive like the more quiet work and then effect it's can better more 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 profit for us for me it's most important nice work i don't know what to say Thank you for the answer. And I think a, a very closely linked question then is um, what are the next steps? Because someone also in the chat is asking about what from the hub's perspective will be the follow up. And of course, also, um, I guess from the company's perspective, it's important to understand if the digitalization never ends, what happens next? OK, so I can start. Uh, what happens next? Uh, as I said, we didn't finish working, so there are new uh, there are new shipments of goods coming. So we need to redo the inventory. We need to open the new and I'd say we because we are still in the process. And to address one of the companies that are back uh, on the chat, which asked, didn't the hub with its roles duplicate the role of technology implementer? Uh, actually, we don't uh because we want uh in the end we want romek to be fully aware of what's happening so what we can do uh is we can obviously there are some training resources available online and there are some companies that are selling the service of implementation of factorovia to whatever place but what we want romek to be left with is he being aware of what he has what the capabilities are and how to operate with this because it's easy i mean all the all those systems that are you know, created after the year 2000 are quite easy to use and the user experience is pretty nice. So that's what we want. That's our goal. That's why I say we and we will do this and we will do that. And uh, uh, and addressing the role of the hub over there, I believe this is exactly the role of the hub. Uh, we like it. We don't like it. It doesn't matter if we want the like the fully aware transformation. We need to have the beneficiaries that understand what has been done because if we don't they will be forever vendor locked and you know paying invoices for people coming to them and saying click here and do that we don't want it because we operate on the commercial budgets again we do and Serpateca does as well so that's why so Romek what are the next steps inventory <laughs> no finishing inventory but it's uh, I think it's quite easy to do it and next step you will be connected from the another warehouse and of course you are just before biggest uh, ordering they coming in the middle of the Mai. And uh, I think that for me, like I said, it's the most important that we clean, clean the, our contact with customers because season is very intensive and customer is not like that deciding sometimes a few days by new board finally decide and in effect of this day, they are calling two days ago later and say, sorry, we have not. You sell this board one day before. And for that, 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 that is for me is most important. Yeah, that clean, cleaning the situation, warehouse and the stationary stuff. Because is Przemek uh, don't say that, uh, about this three years, uh, no, two years before we decide put everything with warehouse, uh, with electronic system, but it's not a cloud. And in effect of the fire, all our work is completely destroyed. And then for me, uh, that if we, if we put now for the cloud, it's also more easier work from the stational season shop because all things we can make by phone and clean uh, the 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 we're going to just stand magazine of Shemek. The, 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 the,
like, like in real in real time. That, that, that that's for me is most important. Then we decide to put everything to cloud. And so. Tam Przemek wytłumacz, no, o co mi chodzi. I think it was quite clear. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Very clear. <laughs> Um, and thank you, thank you for the presentation and this discussion. Um, I think it's some very important and hopefully inspirational takeaways uh, from this case. And uh, I really liked uh, uh, Przemek, what you said about the need to under to have the beneficiary understand what has been done and to be able to use it to have this knowledge transfer. And for the company, of course, being able to have clarity, being able to communicate well with customers. These more business oriented needs are very, very important. And then in this collaboration, the hub understanding that can be very valuable. Um, so in the chat, we have several other questions. I know we cannot in, in terms of time address all of these, unfortunately. Uh, but again, we'll try to address them in other presentations or through the chat. Um, and thank you everyone for participating and thank you for your presentations and the discussion. And I will hand back to Barbora. Thank you, Ruta, and thank you, Przemek and Roman, for sharing your experiences. Um, now it's turn, time to turn the tables around a little bit as we will have a collaborative session with everyone um, in the room. Uh, we will be working together um, to share your experience and insights on various aspects of digitalization. Uh, but before we do that, uh, we have a very short poll that will appear on your screens um, in a few moments as we want to kind of get a sense of who has joined the workshop with us today and who will be participating in this collaborative session. Um, so the poll is really simple. Um, just let us know uh, which type of representative or which type of organization you represent today. Uh, we have company, digital innovation hub, research or academia, public sector, association, or of course, um, other. So let's just take a few minutes um, to hear from you on which company you represent. And it's also a good warm up to start um, participating and coming back into the room. So as usual, I see we have um, quite a few digital innovation hubs participating today. And that's great because we will want to hear a little bit also your views on how you work with companies and how you approach companies. We also have some company representatives, um, research and academia, um, a few from private sector and one association so far. So the poll is open, so feel free to contribute um, as we go. I will share my screen to explain a little bit um, how we will work together um, in the next half an hour. So we will be using Jamboards and yes, we will be split into various uh, rooms to work together. Um, so you will be assigned in a room um, very shortly once I finish explaining um, how we collaborate and the rooms will be moderated by colleagues from PPMI. Um, each room will have an assigned topics, well, actually several topics. Um, we will discuss how can companies collaborate with hubs sustainably? Um, how can we actually ensure that digitalization doesn't stop? As Przemek was saying, once you start, you cannot stop, but actually we need to make sure that the implementations are also sustainable once the companies continue by themselves without the hub support. Uh, we will also discuss um, just the actions companies can take to implement digitalization successfully. And we also talk about how to reach out beyond own network for digitalization. Um, so you will be um, you will receive a unique link once you join the the open the the breakout room. Uh, and we'll be using Jamboards where you will be able to add sticky notes and write your ideas. And then we will have um, a short um, discussion afterwards. Um, please note um, that we are um, working in teams, so there might be some glitches or some things. Um, maybe might wake or work a bit slower. So as we always say, keep calm and carry on, uh, carry on brainstorming, um, even if some aspects break. And 
maybe a final word on who will be moderating the breakout rooms. So in case you have a question, drop a question in the chat. It will be myself, um, Egidius, Ruta and Slobodan. Um, so welcome back from the sessions. Uh, thank you so much for participating. I know my session was quite productive. Maybe we can take a few minutes um, just to sum up the main ideas uh, that were shared in each of the breakout rooms. So I will quickly share my screen with the Jamboards and, and maybe Egidius, Ruta, um, Alexandra, uh, sorry, Egidius, Ruta and Slobodan, maybe you can also share a few words about what was discussed um, in your sessions. Um, so our session focused on building collaborations beyond the hubs network, so how to actually reach out to the companies that are not within um, the hubs network and how to collaborate with them successfully. Um, so as you can see, we had quite um, a lot of ideas, but looking at how to actually build uh, connections and establish collaborations. Um, in our room, we discussed that networking and events and workshops, um, trainings and interactive events is really important to kind of be visible um, to the companies. Um, similarly, showcasing successful projects uh, via videos, um, short blog posts, articles to really explain what the edicts do and how companies can benefit um, is important. And another idea that we very closely tied to this um, is, thank you, somebody is helping to divide the two topics, um, is the very important to have also SME ambassadors that can also spread the message of what the hubs do and how they support. So this is very quickly on how to establish collaborations and how to actually successfully work together. Uh, we discussed that it's really important to make sure that digitalization is driven not by solutions, but by actual uh, needs of the companies um, and then hubs work closely with the companies to identify the solutions based um, on the needs. It's also important to help companies to find partners and funding opportunities to actually digitalize. Um, and of course, very linked to this is to really show the actual benefits of digitalization because for smaller companies, initial steps can lead to a few um, productivity losses um, at the beginning. Um, so I will switch also to um, room one. So I think, Agidius, uh, you discussed sustainability of digital interventions. Would you like to share a few words um, on the discussion? Yes, yes, uh, I do. <laughs> so hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so our breakout room was about all about sustainability, first and foremost. Um, and uh, indeed, um, for 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 us, uh, I think the the key takeaway, and it was it's a pretty optimistic one, I guess, that uh, sustainability of digital interventions or digital uh, investments by companies somehow we 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 kind of thought that maybe it's already um, given by design. Uh, in other words, we've been thinking that look, uh, what everyone needs to do is indeed. So once you start digital investment, you already need to think about uh, what happens uh, after after it, uh, how sustainable it's going to be. Where uh, you also need to really um, well collaborate, obviously, between hub and company management, etc., to, to to make sure that like everyone is really on the same page, everyone is trained to use it. Etc. So if you really plan it well, if you really implement implement it well, so sustainability it sh shouldn't come as a surprise question after the project. It has to be part of the of the project design. So I would say that's that's the key takeaway. And I guess it was also very much inspired uh, by by the by the Surfoteca story we've heard uh, prior to our our uh, interactive session. Great, um, thank you. Then I think, Lobodan, you discussed um, success for smooth implementation and you had, I think also quite a busy jamboard here. So maybe a few words on your main takeaways. Yeah, yeah, there are quite a few of ideas that we discussed. Uh, so the most uh, kind of prominent ideas were related to uh, buy-in and collaboration. Um, so 
uh, our participants thought that uh, involvement of top management and major stakeholders like other companies in value chain and customers uh, uh, are crucial for the for the successful implementation of solutions um, but also uh, the buy-in of the employees so that employees are on board with intervention uh, so change management was seen as crucial uh, and one suggested strategy for this was uh, targeting the opinion leaders among the employees uh, who would uh, who would then motivate others to to adopt the solution uh, but of course uh, this all depends on the company culture uh, so before starting the implementation it's important also to assess the profiles of workers and skills they have so to identify the, the skill gaps uh, but also to consider the technical depth or legacy that company has. So how to uh, connect the new solution to the already existing uh, hardware and software that company has, because this can sometimes be a problem if it's incompatible and can lead to large uh, effort and costs. Great. Uh, another